the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. say you made it amen some of us may have limped in but we made it we may have had a good day but we made it give the lord praise that you made it to the house of the lord on tonight you might have made a mistake today but you made it made it to just the place you need to be oh let's give the lord another praise amen and we want to welcome you to Wednesday night pastor's Bible study. Well, beloved, you know what I want you to do next? I want you to go to your brothers and sisters in Christ and greet them in the name of the Lord. Go find somebody and welcome them to church on tonight. praise again for the victory on tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some of us may need to be reminded, but don't sit down yet, beloved, because it is time for prayer.
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for this service on tonight. We ask you, dear Lord, to grace it, dear Lord, with your holy presence. We thank you, dear Lord, for our pastor, senior pastor, dear Lord, Bishop, presiding Bishop Charles Edward Blake. And we thank you, dear Lord, for our assistant pastor. And we thank you, dear Lord, for all the saints of God that are here on tonight. We ask you, dear Lord, to come in every song and bless every song that is lifted up in your name tonight. We ask you, dear Lord, to bless the musicians that play on one accord. Dear Lord, from the, from the pulpit to the very entrance, back to the ushers to the very front, to the front to the back, dear Lord, anoint and grace this service on tonight. Dear God, we thank you because we're nothing without you, dear God. And dear Lord, we made it here on tonight. Dear Lord, because our hearts desire to hunger and thirst, dear Lord, for righteousness. And dear Lord, bless the guest speaker on tonight, dear Lord, to feed us from manner of heaven. And bless the word of God to come alive. Bless the word of God to set us free. Bless the word of God to deliver your people, dear God. And Lord, we we'll give you all the honor and praise which belongs to you. And dear God, we honor you. We thank you from the very bottom of our heart. We ask you, dear Lord, to touch and heal everyone tonight. And bless us, dear Lord, our every fault, our every covering, dear Lord, our sins, dear Lord, forgive us. And dear Lord, we we'll give you the honor and praise which belongs in only to you, Jesus. And we ask you to bless us now in Jesus' holy name, everyone say amen. This time stand for the reading opening of the scripture. All right. God bless you, West Angeles. I'm reading from the 45th division of Psalms, uh, beginning at Verse 1, my heart is indicted in a good manner. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into thy lips. Therefore, God has blessed thee forever. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O most mighty, with thy glory and thy majesty, and in thy majesty ride prosperously because of truth and meekness and righteousness, and thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Thine arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemy, whereby, whereby the people fall unto thee. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever the sculptor of thy kingdom is a right sculptor. May God bless you. Praise the Lord, West Angeles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise for the kingdom. Hallelujah. For our Savior who sits at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us day. Come on, give him glory. Hallelujah, we bless you, God. Hallelujah, we honor you, Lord. We magnify your name, Jesus. True and living God. Hallelujah. We sing glory unto your name. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise. Let's put our hands together. Hallelujah. Lamb who was slain for our peace. 
Come on, lift your hands in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, speak well of him. Come on, tell him how much you love him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, King of Kings. We love you, Lord of Lords. We love you, sweet Redeemer. We love you, wonderful Savior. We love you, Lion of Judah. We love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just say his name, Jesus. Come on, put his name in the atmosphere. Come on, call his name, Jesus. 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 We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Tell someone the Lord loves you. Come on, tell somebody the Lord loves you. Tell somebody he's here right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. We love Jesus. Amen. We love him because he first loved us. Well, let's praise him one more time. Hallelujah. Let's praise the Lord for the wonderful ministry of our praise and worship team led by our own sister Nikki Potts. Praise God for her. Praise God for these wonderful musicians, these psalmists. Praise God for our executive minister of music, Dr. Judith McAllister. Let's praise God for the presence of our Bishop Blake. Hallelujah. We love you, man of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God for our assistant pastor. Hallelujah. Elder Charles. Amen. You'll be introduced to her later. Praise God for our special guest tonight. She and I were classmates. Praise God for your dear ambassador, Reverend Dr. Susan Johnson Cook. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God for our ushers. Amen. Hallelujah. Our security guards, amen. Now come on, praise God for your favorite person. Praise God for yourself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to lead us in the offering, but before I do that, I've been given permission to share something very special with you. Everyone say Saturday morning. This Saturday morning, we're going to have our last one-day new members class for this year. 
We regularly have new members classes four Sundays every Sunday morning. First Sunday, second Sunday, third Sunday, fourth Sunday. But periodically throughout the year, we have a one-day new members class where you can come and do it all in one Saturday. This is the last Saturday in 2018 that you'll be able to do that. And then following that, we're going to have a graduation soon. So if you have never done the new members class, you sitting in this auditorium or you're engaged with us via the internet, we want to encourage you to come out this Saturday. It's free. It starts at 8.30 a.m. here in this sanctuary. Come on out and enjoy. It'll be from 8.30 to 4, something like that. 3.30, 3.30, yes. And uh, you're going to have a wonderful, wonderful time learning more about West Andros Church, what we believe, and uh, how we progress. So let's praise God for that. Amen? Don't miss that opportunity. Well, now we have an opportunity to do something even more wonderful. Let's give us unto the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. This is our opportunity to invest in God's kingdom. You know, one day we're going to stand before the Lord. And if we are in Christ, we are going to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Because of the grace that he's given us. For we are saved by grace through faith. But he also looks at what, he, what we do on this earth. Amen. Amen. Bible says we're going to get some crowns. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to do some things for him. And one of the things we do is invest in the kingdom of God with our time, our talents, and our substance. So let's give something tonight to be a blessing to the kingdom of the Lord as expressed here at West Angeles Church. If you need a suggestion, we recommend that you try to give at least $25 in the offering. Most of us can do more, most of some of us can do less, must do less. But let's do the best that we can do to be a blessing to God's church here at West Angeles Church. Please use the envelopes that will help you to have a record of your giving for the IRS especially. And uh, let's fill those out. And if you're ready, let's stand. Let's hold our offering symbolically as unto the Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you have nothing to give, just come by, touch the table, and believe God for the next time. But let's give joyfully as unto the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you now for this wonderful and blessed opportunity to give into this ministry. You said give and you shall receive. Thank you that you are our provider and you will provide for us as we provide for your work here in Los Angeles through West Angeles Church. Bless these givers. Bless those that are not able to give with the opportunity to give in the future. So we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Let everyone say amen. Please face the aisles between your sections. Come from the back of the auditorium led by the ushers and give joyfully as unto the Lord.
to test to that if you can testify that the Lord is good to you. Clap your hands and give praise to the Lord. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. God bless you. What a wonderful, uplifting service this has been so far. One preacher said, I wouldn't have a religion that I couldn't feel because I could have it and not know it and not feel it. I could lose it and never miss it. But how many of you know the Lord can touch you? How many of you would not mind if the Lord touched you tonight? There's healing in his touch. There's deliverance in his touch. There's lifting in his touch. There's provision in his touch. And if the Lord touches you, you'll never be the same again. I want to welcome every one of you to God's house, especially those of you who are visiting with West Angeles on tonight. If you are a visitor here, we're not going to embarrass you and call you out and all that. I just want you to stand and let us welcome you to the house of the Lord. If you're visiting, you're so welcome. So welcome, and we thank God for each and every one of you here present. You may be seated. God bless you, people of the Lord. We've heard the observations and the announcements from Dr. Owens, and let's praise God for him tonight. I want to encourage you with him. If you are a new member or if you're an old member, but somehow you never got around to new members class or to pastor's class, I want to encourage you to make sure that you participate in that wonderful, wonderful experience. It'll be a blessing to you, and it'll help you to be able to introduce someone else to the Lord Jesus and to West Angeles Church. Let's praise God for Elder Charles Blake II. <laughs> Lady May, let's praise God for her. Elder and Supervisor Harris, they're with us on tonight, our dear friends. Let's praise God for them. Give your neighbor a rousing applause. And don't forget your favorite person. Give yourself a rousing applause. You're in God's house. That speaks well of you. And that promises great things in your life. Because great things happen when you come to the house of the Lord. And I just believe that this night is going to be a very, very special night. Because we have a very, very special individual in the house of the Lord with us. She has a wonderful biography, and I'm going to read most of it. Because I want you to know the excellence and significance of the person whom we have to share the word of God on tonight. Ambassador Suzanne Johnson Cook, a successful strategist, international influencer, diplomat, appointed faith leader. The Honorable Susan Johnson Cook was the first female African-American to hold the position of US ambassador of international religious freedom. She was nominated by Secretary Hillary Clinton and appointed by President Barack Obama. She was the first principal advisor to the President of the United States and Secretary of State, African American, for religious freedom globally having all 199 countries in the world in her portfolio, integrating religious freedom into their foreign policy and national security discussions. She represented the United States in 25 countries and more than 100 diplomatic engagements, bringing faith leaders and women to the religious freedom table. Additionally, she has been on the faith advisory for two U.S. presidents, three cabinet secretaries, as well as political and celebrity leaders. She served as President Clinton's 
only faith advisor on the historic President's Initiative on Race. And in 2016, she was the only woman to run for New York's 13th Congressional District. Ambassador Cook holds a position of chaplain to the New York City Police Department for 21 years. She's the first woman to serve in that role. She's on the front lines of 9-11 as well as the front lines of bridging relations between the New York Police Department and New York's diverse communities. She was also the first and only female president of the historic Hampton University Ministers Conference in its 102nd year history, the first. The large African-American clergy in the, the largest African-American clergy organization in the world. She serves as pastor for three New York congregations, including the famous standing room only lunch hour of prayer, midweek services, and seminars for the business community. Ambassador Johnson Cook, her passion is to enhance the role of women as leaders both domestically and internationally. Her pro-voice, pro-boss movement is the direct response for seeing firsthand the lack of access and the lack of women as corporate, political, diplomatic leaders. Sarah Sandberg says, lean in. Ambassador Sujay says, we've got to get in. Domestically, her movement helps black, Latina, Asian women become both political and economic forces through connections, celebrations, conversations, and mentoring them into key leadership positions. She's owner of Charisma Speakers, a full cross-cultural communications firm and speakers bureau. She provides keynote speakers, training global experts around the world for corporations, colleges, conventions, conferences, and she's given more than 3,000 speeches. Let's give her a hand for that. She's a civil gender human rights activist. She officiated in the home going services for her mentor and godmother, Coretta Scott King. She's addressed United Nations, the UN General Assembly, UN Geneva Conference, a frequent contributor to CNN, MSNBC, major media. She also writes for the Huffington Post. She's authored 13 books. She, Ambassador Cook is highly regarded as one who bridges party, racial, and gender divides. We are honored to have her with us. And I present to you the Honorable Suzanne Johnson Cook. Stand up, give her a rousing applause. Praise the Lord, everybody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Please be seated in his presence. And if you can't remember any of that, remember that I am glad to know Bishop Blake. Amen. What a wonderful leader and servant God of God. Thank you for your generosity, for your leadership. Don't you think you have a great leader in this church? West Angeles, come on, somebody. Bishop Blake. And I think while you remain standing beside him has Lady Blake. Come on, let's give it up for Lady Blake. Thank you for your beauty, for your elegance. And to Elder and Supervisor, it's a joy to meet you and be with you tonight. And to all the clergy and to all of those who gather here in the name of the Lord, I greet you with Jesus' joy. Also, it's so wonderful to be with my classmate, Elder Oscar Otis Owens. We were at Union Theological Seminary, and we're so delighted to be here with you and your wife and your family. 
I am delighted to have some members of my family with me. And my cousin Ingrid, we, our families grew up together in North Carolina. She lives here in L.A. Cousin Ingrid and her mother and friends and my sisters, not only in the Delta Sigma Theta sorority, but they are my sisters, TJ and Carlos, who is one of the elected officials in Inglewood and your families, and to all of you, I greet you with Jesus. Just stand up, my family, my sisters and my cousin. Just want them to see I got back up. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so for all of those who are elders, if you're 75 and older and you're able to stand, I want you to stand. You have blazed the trails that we walk on, and we just want to say thank God for you. Thank you for blazing the trails that we now walk on. Amen. Now, if you're sitting next to someone who just stood up, hug them for me and say, go on with your fine self. Amen. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. I bring you greetings from the Johnson Cook clan. We've got two sons, one who will make 26 at midnight tonight. And he is uh, now in his last year of med school working in his rotations. Our youngest just finished Princeton. He's in Miami working. So we've got two BMWs in our house. We've got two black men working. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So we praise God from whom all blessings flow. And you know, for four and a half years, I had the privilege of working for one of the baddest men on the planet, President Barack Hussein Obama. What a joy and what a privilege to serve the first African-American president of the United States as a U.S. ambassador. How awesome it was. And Sister Lita, glad to see you. And thank you for dinner. Amen. Y'all feed me well when I come. And Brother Amin, thank you for your hospitality and driving me. We praise God from whom all blessings flow. You know, most people come into the church want something major. They want to make sure that you're, you're quiet and you have prayer. And so he asked me, what did I want? Did I want him to turn the radio off? Did, did I want him to just give me quiet? I said, you know what I really want? I want a chicken wing from Popeye's. Amen. So I'm feeling good in the neighborhood. Amen. So we praise God. I'm a sister. I'm a sister from the hood. Amen. Bishop, with Bishop's permission, I have after, after service tonight two books that are available for you. One is called Soul Sisters, and two of my sisters here tonight are in it. It's um, devotions for and from African American, Latina, and Asian women. We hope that will bless your soul. They're letters to our sons, letters to our daughters, stories about loss, legacy, how we got through different seasons of our life. This will be available to you after service. The other is becoming a woman of destiny, turning your life's trials into triumphs. And in two weeks, we're going to use this book. We're starting an online academy. My ministry, as Bishop shared with you, is for women leaders. It's called WOW, Women on the World Stage. And we'll be starting an academy so that it'll be mentoring, eight weeks of mentoring and going towards your destiny for women. And for women ministers and evangelists, we'll also have a covering component. So if you're interested, the information will be at my table following the service this, morning, this evening. Amen? So you're wondering if I can preach, and I'm wondering if you can pray. Any prayer warriors up in here? Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings are. Now, Bishop, I know this is not a theological term, but I just got to say, you are the bomb. Amen. You just have it going on. Your leadership has touched us worldwide, not just in Los Angeles, not just in the United States, but throughout the globe. The love and respect for your bishop is second to none. I am just glad to be in your presence, glad to be in the service one more time. Amen. Amen. Take the hand of the person closest to you, if you would. If you haven't had a chance to say good evening, say it's wonderful being in worship with you. Now just hold that hand. Hold that hand. We're praying also for Ambassador Diane Watson, who visits here frequently, my sister and my friend. And we ask that you just hold that hand as we invite the Lord to continue to stay with us. Amen. Smile at them if you show, smile at them if you're holding that hand. Show them two or 22, whatever you got left. Say they're mine. If they're implants, if they're dentures, they're still mine. Amen. I'm going to smile at you in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for the hand that we hold. You've been the God of our weary years. You've been the God of our silent and sometimes not so silent tears. Through the storms 
And through the night, precious Lord, you've taken our hand and you've led us on to the light. We thank you for the bishop and his family, his helpmate, his son, and all those who would labor in this ministry. Bless every elder, bless every choir member, every usher, everyone who serves in the name of Jesus Christ. And bless, Lord, those who come under the sound of my voice tonight, whether in the sanctuary or by video, that you might get the glory. Thank you, Lord, for this day that your hands have made. I want you to take the hand you're holding and I want you to shake it gently. Don't shake it off. Shake it gently. Shake off any discouragement that person may still have. I want you to squeeze it gently and squeeze some encouragement into that hand. Now, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart May they be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are our strength. Say strength. And you are our redeemer. Say redeemer. In Jesus' name, let the people who love God shout amen. Shout hallelujah. Take those same hands and give God the praise. If you have your Bibles, and thank you for the Psalm 45 that was read with power, I want you to turn to the Old Testament book of Exodus the 13th chapter. And when you find Exodus, I want you to shout, I've got it. If you still look and say, need more time. If you don't know where it is, say new members class, new members class. The one day Saturday or every Sunday, you got to say new members class. Exodus 13, beginning in verse 17. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, let's peradventure the people repent when they see war, and they'll return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness, say the way of the wilderness, of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely, say surely, visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones away hence with you. Chapter 14, beginning in verse 10. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. Say, sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Say, cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou now taken us to die in the wilderness? Say, in the wilderness. Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Isn't this the word that we told you in Egypt, saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better if we served the Egyptians Then we should die where? In the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he shall show to you today. You shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Say, go forward. forward. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go up on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Tell the children of Israel that they go forward. For this evening, we want to preach on the theme, forward is the only way to go. Turn to tell somebody beside you, forward is the only way to go. God is taking a people to a destination. God always has a destination in mind. He's taking them from enslavement to freedom. 
and it is a journey. All of us have a journey. That youngest son sometimes says, Mom, you are a trip. I said, no, I'm the whole journey. Hello, somebody. <laughs> and so now they are on a journey. For years, their history was one of enslavement. Every day, they had limited resources, had to make bricks without straw. Every day, they had to eat unhealthy food, had brown water every day. But then God stepped in and he lifted up an anointed leader to let us know that it's not an accident, it's not coincidence, but it's providence. That whenever God moves, God had it in mind. And God will step in and at moments that we know not of, when we think we're on our last leg, that last straw, say, but God. When I was a candidate for the ambassador at large for international religious freedom, I had to go through what they call Senate confirmation hearings. We're seeing some of that on TV. I had to sit before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and you had to answer a whole bunch of questions and it just takes one senator to stop your vote. And so if your vote doesn't get to the Senate floor every other year, it just dissipates. It acts like you were never there, it expires. Well. There was a time that it was Easter week and it was a slow week and, and they told me that my vote did not go through. I believed that I had heard God say yes. And so uh, it was a conservative position that was written into law so that a conservative could have the position. So here I come, a black Baptist from the Bronx. That's not really what they had in mind. All say, but God. So in between my vote expiring, the Lord sent a conservative who was from the other side of the aisles to come over to me and said, as a Christian, I felt your heart and I believe you should be in this position. Say, but God. He says, you're going to get a second hearing and I know that you're going to go through because I'm going to direct you to people that may not like you at first, they, but you're going to take their meeting and they're going to take your meeting. And so I went into these rooms with these big burly guys and everyone said, look, um, I was prepared not to like you, but there's something about you. There's something about you that I just can't fight you. Well, fast forward, I did have a second confirmation hearing, answered all the questions and there's a part in the hearing, they said, will all the family of Susan Johnson Cook please stand up? It's supposed to be your immediate family. Well, all these big burly guys said, we're her family. I said, yeah, that's my family. Turn to tell somebody, but God. And I got through. There are times that God moves and we just have to say it's God. And so on this journey, God is taking these people from their enslavement towards their liberation and their emancipation. But some of them don't understand what's in front of them. And so they have agitation. Say agitation. And they start going off on Moses. Didn't you know that we were better off in our enslavement than out here in the wilderness? Didn't we tell you just to leave us alone? We were okay with not having enough resources. We were okay with brown water. Didn't we just say leave us alone? And so there was agitation. But see, both of my sons are really good in science. One is going into medicine. Both of them were good in science. And so to keep up and look at their homework, I had to learn that there were these things called musculos. In Spanish, is musculos. These are a form of clams and oysters that when a grain of sand gets inside it, come on, somebody, it's trying to be cool like an oyster. It's trying to be cool like a clam. But the agitation of that grain of sand makes the DNA of the oyster produce a pearl. So when folks are hating on you, when folks are agitating you, turn to tell somebody, God's just making me a good pearl. Come on, somebody. Oh, God. God says, I've got plans for you. Not for you to be defeated, but plans for you to prosper. Slap somebody high five, say, I'm becoming a pearl, baby. I'm becoming a pearl. So they're on this journey with Moses. God's leading them from doom to destiny. It looks like struggle, but he's really strengthening them. And not only is there agitation, but there's also confirmation and revelation. 
When there's agitation, that's when God does some of his best work because God began to reveal to Moses who the weak ones were, who the ones who were going to stab him in the back. And God began to reveal some things and say that this is just confirmation that you're on the right track. Have you ever thought about it as a Christian? As soon as you say, I promised him that I would serve him till I die, all kinds of mess starts happening. Anybody ever had some drama happening around you? Turn and tell somebody, that was just confirmation that I'm on the right track. So here they were, enemies pursuing them. They were in the wilderness, wilderness on both sides of them, and they find themselves at the Red Sea. It seemed like their backs were up against the wall. It looks like they had nowhere to go. It looks like they had no way out. It looks like they were stuck where they were. But God says, I've got to make a difference here. Moses came around and he preached his first sermon. Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he shall show you today. Say today. So God said, not only are you having agitation, he said, but I've got a reputation. I've got to let you know that I will be God, and through it all, you got to learn how to trust me. Through it all, you got to learn how to depend on my word. And so what was happening was that God was trying to do a mind, mind shift, that they had to go from where they were to where they are now. That he said, if I could do it then, I can certainly do it now and so God begins to take them the long way because had he taken them the short way some of them would have tried to go back to where he just delivered them from and nothing in life is short and easy uh, Mr. Cook is a cook, and so I married a man who was a cook, and we both had southern parents. Both of our parents were from North Carolina and Virginia. Mr. Cook likes everything with gravy. Anything that we have is going to have gravy on it. If we have jello for dessert, it's going to have gravy tomorrow. Uh, he, he likes cooking, and one of the things he likes to cook is pig feet. Now, I know they're vegetarians up in here, but we are some pig feet farm-eating women. Come on, somebody. Every pound on here came from pound cake and pig's feet. Hello. Pig feet is not something you can put in the microwave on one minute. Come on, somebody. No, pig feet, you got to take its time. So Brother Cook would get up in the morning, and he had a crock pot, and he would just put a little salt and a little pepper and a little onion, and then he'd pour in just a little water, and then he put it on slow cook. Well, when we left, the pig feet were still hard. You could still see the pink. You could still see the knuckles. But we come in at 5 o'clock in the evening. Come on, somebody. It's been on slow cook all day. You can't tell where the salt is. You can't tell where the pepper is. And it's falling off the bone. Can I get a witness up here? Oh, can't you taste it right now? Say, I need me some pig feet. Because what God was doing in the midst of it is he was stirring in the seasoning. You couldn't tell where the salt was. You couldn't tell, tell where the pepper was. He was seasoning the meat. And when God's not moving as fast as you think God should, he is just seasoning you. Say, move over, baby. God's just seasoning me. Um, Elder Oscar told me that the Church of God in Christ, our motto and mantra for the year is you are the salt of the earth from Matthew 5. And um, so I wanted to honor that. See, um, down in the country, North Carolina, there were three meals eaten every day because we came from an agrarian culture. And so farmers were in the fields and they were plowing. So th there were always good cooks in the kitchen. Can I get a witness up in here? We always had good cooks in the kitchen. My parents would send us down south. We had moved to New York, but they would send us down south every summer. Some of y'all don't know about that because y'all been in California all your life. But when our parents went to New York, they sent their kids down south every summer so that we know something about cooking and we know something about how to be a lady. Anybody know what I'm talking about? They would put us on a bus and we'd ride all night long and we would have a shoebox with fried chicken wrapped in aluminum foil, come on. And we'd have pound cake wrapped in wax paper, come on baby. Every pound is from pig's feet and pound cake. 
and we ride all night long and we get down to North Carolina, there my grandmother would be waiting for me. She had beautiful silver hair and she always wore it in a bun. And beside her would be one of the Fisher sisters and she called her Aunt Peck. And then beside them would be three of my cousins. They all had double names, Annie Lee and Betty Sue and Lucy May. They said, that third one, don't play with her. She's a little off this summer. And then at the end would be Aunt Miss. Now, Aunt Miss was a snuff-dipping aunt. And she had whiskers. And she could never get enough snuff in her mouth. So the juice would be dripping down her chin. She said, come on and give Aunt Miss a kiss. I ain't kissing Aunt Miss. She said, I'm going to get my switch. I said, you got to get the whole tree? Because I can't kiss Aunt Miss. This is traumatic for a child. And we spend the whole summer down south. We get to the house, we ride in one of those trucks and they had the red clay dirt. And we get to the house and there'd be the other aunts and uncles on the porch rocking in the rock. Come on, somebody. Rocking in the rocking chair. I used to think they were rocking in the rocking chair. It was because they were drinking sweet tea and lemonade. And they pour a whole five pound bag of sugar in the lemonade. They were rocking because they were on a sugar high. <laughs> Every summer, the same question. Hey, Susie, how long you staying? The whole summer, that's how long I'm staying. But then we go inside. We had one black and white TV. Five channels. Two, four, five, seven, and nine. At nine o'clock, it was bedtime. And the Star Spangled Banner would come on with a flat. Oh, come on, come on. I know you've always had a 52-inch color TV, but we had one black and white. They take the foil from the chicken we had, and they wrap it on the antenna to try to get us. Oh, come on. Trying to get a signal. We were the remote control. Get up and change the channel. And then on Sunday morning, we get up and go to Black's Memorial Presbyterian Church. And there'd be a church mother in the back row, and she starts singing, I come to the garden alone, while the dew is still on the roses, and the voice I hear calling on my ear, the Son of God disposes, and he walks with me, and he, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there. But on Saturday morning, we'd have, thank you, we'd have, country ham. Now, there, I'm going to just put this here. There's ham and there's country ham. Now, country ham is dipped in, bathed in salt so that you can preserve it. And what God is saying when you are the salt of the earth, he's saying, I'm preserving you. You just can't pop out any old way. I'm preserving you. And and country ham not only has flavor when you eat the ham, but then you take a cup of black coffee and you pour it in the salty gravy. Come on. And then you put it over some grits. You got red eye gravy. Come on. So when he's saying you are the salt of the earth, he says, I've got use for you. I don't ever want you to lose your flavor. As a Christian, as a believer, slap somebody high five, say, I got to be salty, baby. I got to be salty. So here God takes them the long way. And then Moses and the people with the Red Sea find themselves on the front lines. And front lines, faith is where God demands and does some of his best work. I was on the front lines of 9-11. When that terrible day happened, and I was a chaplain of the NY Police Department, when all those buildings went down and when 6,000 lives were lost, and when you go to the front lines, there's a faith that you have to have. You can't, can't wallow in your trauma. You got to learn how to trust in the Lord. And so here Moses is on the front lines, and God says, I need you not to be a whiner, but I need you to know that you're a winner. Don't whine to me. Don't wimp out on me. I need you to be a warrior because I need you with front lines faith. Moses, 
don't be whining to me. Why are you crying out to me? Tell the people that forward is the only way to go. It may seem impossible, but I major in impossibilities. Tell them forward is the only way to go. To trust me and see what I'm going to do. And what God is saying to everybody here is some days it looks like you're at the Red Sea. Some days it seems like you've got obstacles that are insurmountable. Some days it looks like you're not going to have that tuition money. Some days it looks like the rip, but trust God. He says, I do some of my best work when you are weak. He says, that's when I am strong. Go forward. In the 21st century in 2018 demands forward thinking, forward going Christians. We are the moral majority. We're the ones who stand on the promises of God because you and I together with God are a majority. Ain't nothing too impossible for God. He says we cannot go back to where the things used to be. We can't go back. Any church, any person trying to go back is an out of season church. Out of season Christian. You can't go back. Some of you want to go back to that relationship with that guy who said he was going to marry you and you whined over it. He's now 82. He's toothless with eight babies all over. Say, thank God for Jesus. Say, thank God I didn't go back. Paul says, I will press. I will go forward toward the mark of the upward calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Forward means I've got to go and trust God as I go. We must hold to the promises of God. We've had our backs up against the wall before. We've been in the wilderness. We've had red seas in front of the... We certainly have had enemies pursue us. Has anybody had any haters? Come on, somebody. We certainly have been in this position before, but say, but God. God got us to the other side. Because after God said, Moses, tell them to go forward, he said, also, I want you to lift up what's in your hand. I've placed a staff in your hand. And if you trust me and use what I've given you, miracles can happen. He said, the people of God made it to the other side on dry land. And that's what God wants for every ministry, to help people get to the other side to the other side of their pain, to the other side of that hard divorce, to the other side of homelessness. We have to help people get to the other side. And when they got to the other side, Bishop Moses and Aaron and Miriam and the sisters in prayer and praise with power in his presence began to dance before the Lord with all their might. They went forward. They went in faith, not separated by the borders or by the waters. And they stood on the promises of God. We have to stand on his promises. For God provided his son. Don't get tripped up about what's happening on 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue because my Lord said the government shall be upon his shoulders. And so he took a crucified carpenter at Calvary who said, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He took a savior who did not stay on the cross, did not stay in the grave, but early on a Sunday morning got up for you and got up for me. I serve someone who's mightier than the residents of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. I serve someone who's mightier than a president, than a governor, than a pope. They stretched him wide. They hung him high. For you and me, he died. Tell me that's love. And what he said is, I'm taking you forward. Forward it's the only way to go. I ain't going back. Can't turn back. I've got to go forward. My, my pastor in, in um, Maryland is, is a pilot, and I've been running into other pastors who are pilot. And the one thing I learned is that airplanes don't even have reverse. Because when they fill up, 
they got to take off and they got to go forward. We've come on this Wednesday night, turn and tell somebody, I can't go in reverse. We're filling up a sanctuary. God said, I'm taking you somewhere. I've got a destination in mind. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Picks us up, turns us around, places our feet on higher ground. And God says, I'm taking you forward. Forward is the only way to go. Hallelujah. 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 everybody let's praise God praise God praise God I know somebody's been challenged by that word I just feel a need to call you to the altar I just feel a need to call you to the altar the devil is trying to encourage somebody trying to take you backwards rather than forward you made up your mind and your spirit that you want to go forward you want to be an overcomer, a winner in the name of Jesus. Don't let your misfortunes turn you around and take you backward from the way that the Lord is calling you. God has better things for you. Just around the next corner, your blessing is there. But you've got to go forward. You've got to be in the place of blessing. Whenever God consigns to us a responsibility. He assigns to us a place, a location that we've got to go to get that blessing and to perform that work. If we don't go forward, then we'll miss out what God has for us on down the road. Child of God, make up your mind. I will not stop. I will not be defeated. I will go forth in the power of God. You want God's blessing on you. Get in the aisle. Come down to the altar quickly as you can. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm upward bound. Lord, plant my feet on high. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's stable land, a higher place than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on high. tells us to go forward. Jesus Christ, our Savior, tells us to go forward. By what authority, by what power would he say such a thing to us? By the power by which he arose from the dead. He grabbed death by the collar and shook death till he turned him loose. And then death turned him loose and death stepped aside. He said, all power in heaven and in earth is given unto me. I have the key to death and to hell and the grave. Clap your hands for the one who calls you upward and onward. Lord, how we thank you. Lord, how we thank you. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your might. Thank you, dear Lord, that you arose from the dead. And if you arose from the dead, I know I can make it. Come on, tell three people you can make it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He that hath begun a good work in you will perform it 
until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. God says, I'm just going to keep on performing. I'm just going to keep on working. I'm just going to keep on blessing till I get you where I want you to be. Tell your neighbor, you're on your way to victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. So, Lord, I proclaim victory. I proclaim overcoming power. I proclaim miracles, signs and wonders in your life. Whatever God has to do to get you where he wants you to be, God is going to do it. He's able. I said he's able. He's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Tell your neighbor exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Clap your hands and give God praise. Give somebody a miracle. Give somebody a miracle. Give somebody a miracle in this house tonight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Stand where you are just for a moment. You've heard this wonderful word from the Lord. The Lord has spoken to us and called upon us to go forward, not backward, but forward. That's a salvation call for somebody in this room tonight. You don't know Jesus. Your sins are not forgiven. You're not saved. But you want to be saved, and you want to know Jesus. If that's you, lift that hand. Hold it high. Preacher, pray for me. I want to be saved. I want to give my life to the Lord. Well, everybody who's saved, clap your hands and praise God. Anybody that wants to join the church, you want to be a part of this fellowship, you want to be a part of the life of this church, lift your hand quickly. But let's praise God for this. Come on, come on down here, brother. Come quickly. Let's, let's praise God for that tremendous word. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come right on up here, brother. Come right on up this, right through here. Come on up. What's your name, sir? Brother Duan, do you know Jesus as your Savior? And you want to be a part of this church. Well, this church wants you to be a part of this church. And we praise God for you, Brother Divine. You're so welcome. And we pray that God will bless you and help you to come more and more conform to his will and to his way for you. Where are my personal workers? Would you walk over to that fellow there? He'll lead you to the prayer room. God bless you. Let's give Brother Duan a rise in the floor. And let's praise God for our speaker one more time. And so, dear Lord, we thank you for your presence. Thank you for your word. We thank you for this, your servant, who has shared it with us, causing our lives to be richer and better and our success to be more unaffordable. Bless us now as we go down from this place. Keep us, guide us, direct us. Bring us safely together again that we might worship and praise you. Bless our speaker as she'll fly all night long back to the East Coast. Care for her, dear Lord, and protect her. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you.